um, we're going to talk about um, load balancing as a service, which is now a part of Neutron project. And um, I'd like to start with um, what the service uh, looked like in Grizzly for those who are not very familiar with it. Since it was introduced in Grizzly release, uh, I'd like to show uh, those nice elephants. Um, and the list of, I'd like to show the list of features that we had in Grizzly. Um, we got a couple of things uh, we should help user to play with the whole, whole project, uh, which is REST API, ability to operate uh, with it with CLI. Uh, we had Horizon integration. Um, as a backend implementation, it was um, HA proxy based um, solution, which uh, spawns HA proxy software load balancers on the network controllers. Uh, and we also um, had DevStack support out of the box. Uh, so you can install it in your single node installation. Um, that's how it looked like from um, architecture prospect perspective. So users work with Horizon or uh, with CLI. Uh, the rest call gets into um, LBS extension, load balancer API extension. Uh, it is processed by the load balancer plugin. Uh, the configuration is stored in the database. Then a plugin communicates with the agent that resides on network controller via RPC. And agent uh, manages HA proxy processes. Uh, that is how data model uh, looked like in Grizzly. So we had we have a few major objects which are uh, VIP pool, member, health monitor. Um, that's how they are related. So one of the major limitations of this model is that um, you could only have one VIP for the pool and only one pool for the VIP. Um, Uh, that picture represents the wiring, how it, how it uh, works for um, HA proxy implementation. So process uh, listens on the uh, IP address that belongs to the same subnet uh, in which members um, reside. So in order to able to reach the uh, VIP, you need to uh, associate this VIP with the port of the load balancer VIP. Um, so th that kind of additional step you need to uh, perform to get it uh, reachable from outside. Um, workflow is, is quite simple. Uh, you start with creating a pool, adding members to it, uh, associating VIP with the pool, and also um, additional objects like health monitoring and um, persistent objects for the, for the VIP. And uh, then uh, I'd like to talk about the major changes that we did in Havana. Uh, so in Grizzly release, the whole thing was kind of experimental. Um, it was very, uh, you know, hard coded into the existing HA proxy implementation. And the first, first thing we did, uh, we have added multi-vendor support, uh, which is ability for the user to choose the actual, actual implementation of the service um, he creates. So it's a, an additional extension that um, allows you to specify the provider uh, at the point when you create a pool. Uh, the second major change is that we created the driver API for the plugin, for vendor plugin drivers. The plugin driver is the notion of the um, piece of code that resides on the server side and is responsible for uh, storing additional um, data in the database and, in, uh, and it is responsible for communication with the backend devices uh, in its own vendor specific way. So for 
for say um, existing implementation, plugin driver communicates with with the agent via RPC. Um, other way, other vendor may have their own um, backend solution that manages VMs or hardware appliances, and uh, in this case, agent may not be needed. Um, so that all creates the framework which uh, helps to ad adopt different um, architectures of uh, how you interact with the backend devices, backend implementations. Uh, and also, we have a major uh, improvement for the um, reference implementation, which I prefer to call now a HA proxy provider. Um, initially in Grizzly, there was a big limitation that you could only have one HA proxy agent and uh, one, HA, one node that runs all the HA proxy processes. So that was obviously not scalable. Um, and now we have the agent uh, scheduling mechanism that allows you to have any number of agents or and any number of nodes running HA proxies. So that kind of solve scalability issues. Also, we have improved statistics retrieval, and you can you can um, use it from the CLI, and uh, we're able to use it from the horizon. And also, we uh, modified the work with health monitors, um, making it more natural. So that picture just represents that uh, you could have several um, network controllers or it could be even dedicated HA proxy nodes uh, where you have uh, LBS agent running and it, it will manage HA, uh, HA proxy processes. Uh, when you create a pool, uh, it, is by, uh, it is bound to um, some node in random fashion. So you have the uh, distribution of HA proxy balancers across the nodes. Uh, so this is how um, overall picture looks right now. We have added the service provider extension that allows you to specify the provider uh, for pool creation. That's kind of um, expected change and also you have drivers inside the LBS plugin that uh, utilize different um, communication patterns with backend devices. Some use agent, uh, some drivers don't use agent, they use some external entity to reach load balancers uh, and some reach for devices directly. Uh, and the probably most interesting part is uh, what do we plan for Havana? Um, so in late, in late Havana, um, we received, we uh, experienced growing interest both from users and from vendors uh, asking for certain features that are not yet, uh, that were not present in, in Grizzly. And one of the, uh, most desirable features um, were ability to have multiple VIPs per uh, one node group, per one pool, and also a multiple pools per, per one VIP. It also related to a, a notion of layer seven rules, uh, which kind of um, configurable rules that allows you to uh, analyze L7 traffic and point it to the right group of nodes, to the right pool. So the first two bullets represent the uh, major data schema change, data model change, uh, which gets rid of one-to-one -one mapping between uh, VIP and pool and um, changes it to many-to-many. -many. Uh, you can have multiple VIPs per pool, you can have multiple pools per VIP. Um, and another thing, which actually is a consequence of first two and also have various reasons to be implemented, is the load balancer instance notion, uh, which wasn't there uh, and we need it. So load balancer instance is the new entity um, that will be the 
root object and the starting point of your workflow. So instead of uh, starting with the pool creation, uh, you start with load with creating load balancer. Uh, and that is a number of um, consequences. So one of the consequences is that uh, you bind your um, load balancer instead of binding the pools to various objects, like uh, currently we bind pools for uh, to agents, we bind pools to providers, we bind pools to routers, uh, you'll be working with um, load balancer instance. By the way, from the user, user perspective, it, it, it will be just an additional step that will create uh, this, uh, this object and all this you know, binding is uh, behind the curtains. So from user perspective, you don't need to worry about all this um, stuff. And you can just think about load balancer instance as a container for BIPs and pools. Um, Another major change that we plan to implement is the vendor API extension framework. Uh, existing extension framework um, is only focused on extending core API and um, core API in, the, in certain fashion that requires you to uh, put all of your maybe specific code into a common space. Uh, that limitation actually um, slows down the development of vendor-specific features. We need to, uh, vendors to be able to expose their specific features without, you know, um, adopting them to be too generic. Because when you when you make generic thing, uh, it's also very hard to get a consensus within the community on how it should be implemented. And by um, creating such framework, uh, vendors will be able to expose specific features through their drivers. And it will be exposed on the API layer. Uh, also, we plan to, uh, to implement particular features using that vendor extension framework, such as device inventory. Some vendors uh, work with virtualized and hardware appliances. Uh, and they prefer to have additional API where users or cloud operators could register new devices, um, maybe delete them, and such devices will um, participate in distribution of the load balancer resources that are created by users. Uh, another uh, very desired feature is uh, SSL termination and SSL offloading. I know a few vendors are working on this part and probably in Ice House we'll see some solutions that actually implement this. Um, another important thing is um, route load balancer insertion when you can have uh, BIP and pool actually residing on different subnets uh, where VIP subnet could be external network. So you plug, uh, plug uh, your VIP directly in external network and you don't need to specify floating IP, it's already there. Um, other features include heat and seelometer integration. Uh, we're thinking about having more support from heat side. It, ha uh, it has some basic support right now and, and to, uh, we plan to improve it. And also we have, uh, we have plans to um, uh, integrate uh, CELometer with LBS to you know, mm, measure and monitor things. Uh, and another important thing we would like to do in Ice House, and probably it, it will become a requirement to have an integration testing suit that will cover the basic um, user scenarios uh, in which uh, all the code that is submitted should um, should be tested against. Uh, and that is requirement both for existing, uh, existing code and for new code that uh, is going to be submitted by vendors. 
So probably uh, that also could be utilized as the verification that you have created um, correct installation of the load balancer and you have set up your cloud right uh, in the sense of load balancing. Uh, so this picture represents how uh, model change will look like. Um, actually, if you uh, don't look at load balancer instance, you have a configuration graph instead, instead of configuration tree, which is um, harder to maintain in the code if we don't have this in, uh, load balancer instant, instance notion. That is something that um, end user is not aware of, but I'm just saying that it simplifies lots of things and probably uh, it simplifies the, mm, it simplifies the, how you can think of your configuration. So it's instance, you can bind it to a device, you can bind it, bind it to a router. It's not just a bunch of, you know, vips and pools around. Uh, and that is how architecture will look like if we introduce the vendor extension framework. Uh, instead of monolithic LBS extension, we'll have uh, vendor extension as well. So it's additional calls that, is, that are implemented um, within the plugin. And if plugin doesn't implement them, it finds the implementation within the driver. So there will be some kind of dispatching mechanism that will uh, go through drivers and see if drivers support it. <clears throat> so uh, in, in uh, other sense, architecture uh, remains the same. Uh, we can have various uh, architectures in the sense of communication with backend devices. So nothing new, nothing new here. Uh, and uh, I also would like to say about uh, which vendors do we support right now which and uh, which vendors are actively working on introducing their drivers. So we have HA proxy provider, which is an open source implementation of the API that, that we have. Uh, late in Havana, uh, Redware um, have committed their driver, which works with virtualized uh, load balancers, and they use their uh, external management platform to which they communicate within their driver. Also, we have um, NICERA implementation of LBS that is um, relying on NSX platform. Um, those three implementations are already available. Uh, probably they, uh, Redware and NICERA, probably they are in some kind of, you know, experimental status right now, but, you know, they are actively working on it. Uh, also, we have three more companies that are already published their code for review, so they are actively working on uh, their drivers to be uh, included in the upstream. And also, we have a few more companies that are, that, um, that are planning to do, to do the same in the house cycle. So that, I would say, uh, is a good variety of solutions that will be available to users. Um, that's pretty much it with the um, existing uh, status of LBS and I would like to see your feedback on, on this. Maybe you have some questions, maybe you have some you know, feedback on your uh, experience with the LBS. Um, that would be good to know. For, for the concept of the um, load balancer instance, how do you deal with the number of actual instances? The load balancer of a concept has to be multiple instances because you want it to be highly available. How do you define how many actual instances are running a load balancer? Uh, wh what do you mean by saying how, how do I define? You as a user create an instance and you 
may create as many as you allowed to, but uh, that kind of could be, you know, limited by a quota, but what do you mean by, say, by saying how do I define? So you've introduced the concept of an instance to which all of the information is attached, but there's the concept of an instance that's actually executing the load balancing, and I have to have multiple of those. Uh, you mean the, the process itself? Yes. So that will be, for, um, if we are talking about processes, that will be uh, direct mapping between a load balancer instance and the process. So currently we have one process per one pool because the pool is the, you know, the root object of the old configuration and this role goes to instance object. So we'll have one process per the instance and one process will serve several VIPs and several pools if we are speaking about HA proxy. If, we'll, if we are speaking about uh, virtualized or hardware implementation, then actual appliance may serve several instances or it may serve just one. That is up to a vendor to decide. Two questions. The first one is in the current HA proxy implementation, uh, you're saying that the pool maps to an HA um, proxy process. So does that mean that the HA proxy process in itself is not highly available? And what are your thoughts on the future of high availability for the standard implementation on HA proxy? Yes, that's, uh, that's a good question. So currently there is no HA for HA proxy. And uh, I know folks that uh, are willing to help us with it. And uh, the current model make, makes it some, somewhat simple to implement because uh, you have HA proxy within the same subnet uh, as, as the members and you need to attach a uh, floating IP to it. And if you have many of them, you can just detect if one fails and you reattach the floating IP. So with existing implementation is something that is not quite complex to implement and probably uh, with some help, help of, of the community will implement it in nice house. And the second question will, will be, okay. <laughs> uh, and depending on the multi-tier multi of load balancer. Sorry, could you repeat? Uh, I think that uh, iHouse will support the uh, uh, low balancer running on the VM instance. So is there a limitation on the number of tier of the low balancer? So for example, can we run in uh, the first tier with a low balancer and the second tier with two low balancer or multiple low balancer? Yeah, why not? So if there's no limitation on the number of tier. Um, I think we shouldn't have such limitation, why? So it's just about how you, you know, how you wire different networks together. Uh, I doubt that it could be a reason to do more than, you know, two, two layers of this, but I also don't see a reason to add the limit to this. Okay, any more questions? Um, may I ask questions to you? Oh, okay, you got one. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> because um, that is something that uh, I would expect to get help from the community because, you know, um, the heat and cylinder integrations are great things, but uh, the main focus will be on getting the feature parity at least to the basic feature set that uh, vendors support against what you know LBS supports right now. It supports less than basic features and we need to get to the same level. So that's where our focus will be. Uh, if we get the help with integrating heat and cylinder, that will be great. Otherwise, I'll be uh, saying the same thing on the next presentation. Um, okay, so. Any questions left? 
Yeah, please. I think that um, the you know the primary contact point is OpenStack Dev and OpenStack mailing list. I'm usually uh, looking through and uh, usually answer most of the emails regarding LBS, and I, I'm also um, coordinating uh, coordinating LBS sub team within Uturn team. So if you have development questions, you can. You can reach me directly or you can reach me through the mailing list. Um, other questions? Um, okay, then probably um, I'll ask the question to our audience. Uh, maybe someone has strong opinion why load balancer sucks in neutron. Maybe they tried it and they hated it. Anyone? You know, receiving the critics is something good because uh, we haven't been receiving much of the feedback and we would r really like to because, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. And uh, okay. <laughs> it was a pain when there is a load balancer this time, but now it's changed. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, so I suppose that okay. Just going back to um, um, the original question, um, most people using. Um, load balancing as a service are expecting to provide high availability to a given um, application. And if the load balancer itself is not highly available, especially the reference implementation, uh, then you know, you're know you not highly available. Um, so um, I understand that there, you know, some vendors may implement that, but I would expect that the reference implementation based I on see, HA see. proxy is highly available in itself. So okay. Yeah. I think that you know we will move this feature up the list in priority. <laughs> uh, that's also good to know. Um, maybe then a success story. Anyone? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not this release. Uh, uh, okay, maybe someone expecting some particular vendor implementation of the load balancer. That would be interesting. Uh, okay then, um, we can spend another 10 minutes being silent <laughs> or we can or we can just, you know, go out or we can continue with questions. What do you prefer? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.